Yeah. So, um, like you said, you know, uh, Dr. Zaner said, I, uh, I played classical guitar over there. I worked with uh, Dr. Alves and uh, Dr. Zaner to get those uh, two BFAs done. And, um, you know, throughout the time, um, I was kind of struggling with performance anxiety and I'm coming up with this music and I'm not really sure what to do with it. And um, I've always come from like a, uh, a point of inspiration, I guess, is, is why I like to write. Uh, there's definitely some personal enjoyment and fulfillment that way, but I always want to, I'm at least uh, recently for sure, I'm trying to find influence in my work. So um, I really thought film or in general media was, was just a great platform, current modern platform where I could really use some of the, the classical skills that I, I was learning um, or, well, you know, music theory, all those different things, um, all these tools that I had taken from Marshall. And, uh, and I really got exposed to a lot of that through um, Jesse Nolan. I don't know if he's still there. But um, he kind of worked the music tech class and was the one to introduce us and Dr. Sainer as well, um, an electronic music class, uh, just how to work the DAWs and, and really get that sort of technology flowing um, into in, my tool, toolkit as well. And, and that's where I really saw the biggest correlation, I think, with music and media um, is, is through DAW work and being able to kind of function music through the computer um and and figuring out all of that so uh that's that's really what kind of led me um to the masters over at uncsa um they have a great film program going on um right now it's been a little tough with covid as you can imagine but there's still some production um and um i i basically went there because uh, i talked to actually another former alumni uh in in the same scenario here uh, Mark Haas, who's on the concert for tonight, and and he had also gone to UNCSA and, and just had some really good experience, and there was video game scoring and commercials and uh, documentary work and um, two opportunities, junior year uh, and senior year undergraduates are, are films that we, you know, they made a lot of films we were able to score for, and uh, it was really a great experience overall. Um, uh, making that choice, I think was, was definitely a good one because it really did open up uh, my eyes to kind of where music is lying today. Um, and even what it takes to record music and capture music and edit it can be used like across any, any platform as far as uh, right now, I'm, I'm in contact to get on scorekeepers.com uh, for just library music work. Uh, there's been some different things i've been trying to reach out via email to get some film work but uh i had just recently started that so um that seems to be uh sort of a, an interesting line of media actually is is the work um i'm seeing well actually i i have a question for you guys real quick um who in particular is uh is looking to do music uh, involving media and, and uh just just what in general, uh, you know, what genres or, or what uh, were you interested in? My major is video productions. And so um, the overlap, my, music's my minor. And okay. so I'm um, trying to find areas where that intersects and overlaps has been of interest for me, um, like nice. film scoring or um, even just like uh, the idea of creating a more generic level, like I don't want to say royalty free, but I guess like more marketable um, music for videos and things like that's been of yeah. interest. Love it. Okay. Um, and Rodrigo, are you going more toward film uh, as per tonight's piece that you're presenting? Or yes, I'm. Okay. I'm focusing my studies in film music, and it's good to know that you went to North Carolina. Then you can discuss oh, yeah. more. Yes, I was just oh, writing oh, for sure. you on Facebook oh, now I love it. to answer you. <laughs> I love it. Then I saw you here. Great. But yeah, same. <laughs> I was like, oh, what a nice surprise, you know. We'll definitely have to catch up uh, in more yeah. detail on stuff. But um, I had a question, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, absolutely. What is what has been your exposure into like game music, or how would you go about getting some more opportunities like that? Um, or yeah, or what do you need to be prepared? I would say too. No, fair enough. Um, game music actually seems like a, a more available uh, avenue to just kind of dive in. There's a lot of um, indie video games and things, even just for mobile apps and stuff. 
that are being developed. And a lot of people that I've talked to really um, were able to kind of get into that, going to game conferences and just going up to the developers, you know, having your card, having your music uh, on USB even, and just saying, hey, reach out, uh, you know, maybe you get a good conversation and they remember you kind of thing. Um, and, and much, like I said, more accessible, even just, um, personally and stuff, but as far as, as what it takes to write, uh, video game music, what I found in my studies and the coursework, uh, composing it, uh, I don't know if you've ever used Ableton or, or written like any sort of house music that way, where you can put on layers and take them off like muting and stuff. I found that to be actually a, a huge portion of, of writing because, uh, writing for video games because of the player interaction, you know, and that's, that's one big thing on one hand, emotionally that you have to take into account because you're the character, you know, you're on this journey. Um, how does that build? Are there enemies around, you know, is that, is it going to be a serene sort of landscape, bring in some minor or something, some sort of dystopia for a crazy boss stuff. So you have to measure your music and its emotional uh, availability and, and when, the players can actually trigger those moments um, is, is where that sort of relates to, like I said, Ableton style writing and stuff where you can kind of just add on a layer essentially. Um, and then you, and you know, they'll, they'll break it down the, the uh, video game makers into different stages. So you have adventure mode, you have um, encounter mode. So that's like your second level of, of sort of music build and stuff. And then you have your third, which is gonna be your, your real encounter, you're fighting an enemy, you know, there's action. And, um, I, and yeah, so I would say um, familiarizing yourself with composing that way is a big thing, but then, you know, making that not redundant also, because you have to keep in mind, and one thing I found that was a little tough with my writing at first was that eventually uh, what you wrote is gonna loop if they stay in this adventure mode, you know, they're walking around the desert or, you know, if you play Zelda, the woods, you know, and just kind of exploring, uh, you know, how does that, how do you maintain a melody uh, to capture the setting, to capture where the character is in the setting without it being like, oh, you know, that just restarted. I could tell while I was playing. So you have to, you have to also keep this, this line of, um, I guess it's sort of staying, but, below the scenes but with it so it's it's a very interesting endeavor i i loved uh that three weeks i was able to kind of compose for we you know we did um in our coursework like different stages you know so we we wrote an adventure style thing next week tried to write that into our uh you know encounter mode and and so on but uh um yeah my buddy too uh one of my colleagues uh i graduated with just got an indie game actually um, so something to also be prepared for with something like that, uh, getting on the game is one thing, but the game can fall through a lot, I guess, with funding. Uh, that's something I think, uh, Ryan is the same. He's going to run into, uh, because he hasn't heard anything, you know, the line the lines just kind of dropped over the last few weeks. Uh, and he hasn't, uh, or, or more, I actually don't know how long, but, uh, so, so that'll be something to prepare for, um, how you're going to get paid and, you know, uh, this guy, Rob at Rod Abernathy, uh, I worked with him. He, he taught a lot of this coursework and he's been composing for games and songwriting and stuff. And he said, know the finance person, <laughs> you know, as soon as you can, you know, call the, the company or indie developer, whoever, just make sure you know who's going to pay you because there's just a, I think a, a, a bit of disorganization or something there, it seems like, uh, from his experience. So, yeah. Did you think that uh, your past collaborations at Marshall um, helped you with those kind of collaborations where you're you're taking what we do, where we have mm -hmm. verbiage for everything that we do that only affects us, and we're trying to give it to somebody else in a completely different art field like video games or visual art? Oh, yeah. Like for us, uh, whenever we were both undergrads, it was the dance mm -hmm. collab. No, right on. Did things like that help you? Yeah. Oh my gosh, like tremendously, you know, going into that first uh, semester where we were obtaining actual student films, you know, just being used to that style of communication and, and working with somebody on verbiage, like you said, getting a way to kind of, and by all means, dumbing it down is not the way to think about it. It is um, being super creative 
uh, about sort of more uh, just straight up music jargon things. I mean, it's really hard to explain, oh, I can create a 30 second note here to, to create more pace without getting louder or anything. And they're just gonna be like, uh, what? But you have to say, oh, well, I can increase the, the amount of times this hits or something. So that was, uh, that was something I really came in strong with. I mean, the collaborations went, I got four films, you know, there were, it, everyone was kind of mad at me because they're like, hey, you know, we all want one too. <laughs> so uh, yeah, totally. I mean, it was just hands down a great time. So, and it's, it was kind of interesting to see how similar those two things were because Chef, I, I'm sure you remember, we talked a lot about mood and emotion and, and some of these creators are so in that mind space, like we can be, um, they're all about expressing their art form, what they're trying to say. And as long as you can get on that level, uh, with any of these people that you may collaborate with, no matter what uh, art form it's it's going to be the heart and soul of it really is to find that emotional middle ground and then you kind of build language from there <laughs> so yeah um have you ever worked on projects uh that were like just one or two people and whenever you did how did you kind of go about so like my uh uh, over the break, I got contacted by a buddy of mine who's going to develop his own game, and it's just me, nice. and him, and the art guy. Mm -hmm. um, and none of us have really talked. Like he told me the story and he told me the setting, but other than that, it's basically whoever gets first to this side project, they're kind of yeah. gonna set what the tone is in a sense. That's fair. Yeah. Um, so I, I was wondering if you had experience with that, and and what what a sort of jumping off point is as far as like, you know, can you give me the story? What, what's the theme? What's the setting? Mm -hmm. Like something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. What, what do you kind of push for? Um, no, I, I totally had this experience. I, I got in touch with this guy, you know, I'm a groovy guy. He's a groovy guy. He's got this weird idea for an animation and we we're just so excited about it to start off ideas left and right. Um, and it was me and him and this other uh, chick Gabby. And we we're, we're really breaking it down one night and then all of a sudden when it came down to really starting to hash things and build the bricks per se it was just like a flat line you know um it it was even hard to get meetings together so in in that sort of scenario when workflow is going that way what i found was consistency uh and communication just even the you know oh hey do you want to schedule something soon or how's this going or uh, any of that stuff and and just trying to apply what you have to bring to the table as much as possible can kind of get their ideas going that's one thing I found because um, this, this I can actually show you this animation it was like a minute and a half if you want but um, basically uh, I jammed out for like 10 minutes on on uh, logic I just played like a bass track went in with the guitar layer second guitar layer third and then put the drums on and i'm sitting back at all this music and i'm like hey what do you want me to do with this you know i i just sort of started to compose uh at a certain point and it really did get him to say oh man i can have these things come in with those you know with the drum hits here and where that guitar picks up i can really you know change the setting or whatever and those ideas uh without much discussion was able to kind of just blossom on his side so you know if you can get yeah even just asking about like oh what is the main setting you know like whatever uh candy land you know is what's the name of the place who's the main guy that you're playing with um and and that's really going to give you maybe okay well you know it's going to be in the, the woods. I love to say the woods uh, and it's going to be like a Tarzan guy. So maybe I'll use some marimba here and like, maybe you can start to get ideas just by like some super basic uh, stuff like that and just keep it going, you know, every, every day or any chance you get, that, that was my biggest thing to get that finished was I just kept on kind of feeding ideas and then they're like, Oh yeah. And then like, Oh, I can do this. You know, deadlines were, were barely met, but <laughs> it happens. Uh, about the organ.
terrible music at it, sorry. So yeah, then it just goes into the sort of epilogue for the credits. Uh, yeah, I guess we need to do it. I'm a very mogwai here, if anyone knows that band. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, that that was you could hear the jam elements. Um, I really that was still that first project I had sent to Ben, and um, that was uh, sort of our big moment because we had these jam sessions also at school that I I held, and it was me and uh, the creator Gabby and some of her friends to fill out the band, and we kind of talked about um, you know some of that style that I put in there musically, um, sort of that funky hard rock stuff uh, on how that developed but um i mean even that terrible music edit there was just one point where we were getting it done at my house like day of and and you know he's bringing over the animation he just finished it the night before still sweating from it kind of thing and just i just we just slapped that in there and, and it was actually crazy how by all of our just discussion and and whatever about the setting the character the story you know it's this was silent so there had to be well you saw how it was put together um but yeah we laid the music almost right on it within an hour at, or less it was just done everything really he didn't even animate to the music or anything uh, which will happen you know in time but you know he just had a good uh, pacing on it and yeah just slapped it right together so it, it shows so much like I, I guess you can get done by visualizing and conceptualizing uh but you know, everyone works different. So that was a fun one though, a really fun one. Um, okay, so you so you talked about it and then you got together with the band and you jammed mm -hmm. and then he did the animation separately and then he just put it together. Yeah, no, yeah, okay. he brought it to the house. I had the project, you know, I had to start manipulating the music a little bit okay. and you know, he's picking spots like, oh, well, let's use this for the battle scene and let's use this section of the jam for whatever and we just, we melded it together so it okay. worked out you know it was, it was fun we got some good applause everyone loved the uh the, the feel and stuff so that was good well it's a lot of fun one question i had is it was mm -hmm. it a live drum kit and you it is it was a live drum kit. It, it was not uh these so i took all the concept music back to the house and i said okay 
it's this kind of thing, you know, the, it, the jams never really turned out to be usable material really oh, okay. uh, just because of the reverbs. And I didn't really, we never really set it up, set it up. Um, but so, yeah, I, I actually did that on my E kit. Um, and surprisingly enough, I didn't have to do much, but change some, some hit uh, dynamic levels. Uh, that was it. Uh, some velocity levels. And uh, mm -hmm. that was good. So. Oh, so, you, so you play the drums, you play the drums. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I use this bad boy right here. Okay. All yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I played all the, the instruments and the parts in and stuff, just, you know, one long night <laughs> kind of thing. Okay. Um, did you, so, yeah. did you play drums in one of the combos here? I was that. Way yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I was saying. I played with Jerron's combo. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was a good time actually, you know, Lars would step in here and there. And okay. I had one good concert and one terrible concert, you know, we we're trading for us. I just lost it. I was just like snare, snare, snare. <laughs> <laughs> just, but, uh, good time for it. Sure. uh well that's that's a that's a good it's an interesting point uh because mm -hmm. that's a unusual do you know your classical guitar guy uh i mean a lot of people that play guitar will also have done pop music but it's mm -hmm. a little rare to have somebody who's played drums you know so I yeah no i talk about uh film composition is like one man band uh yeah. and first line of work is if you don't already know the piano, I mean, you will from MIDI, but being able to play guitar is one thing that's hard to replicate, uh, you know, unless you're doing strums and different things. But I mean, if you're going for real variety, it's you need a player. So that's a big one. But uh, drums come in, in real big handy, too, because I'm finding um, even on like Pro Tools collaborations and stuff through just randomly talking to people online, you can like send them a track or I don't know. But it really helped my compositional work with film because, I mean, I'm getting... I'm getting something like this and I'm getting this really big orchestral, you know, piece I'm having to work on the next morning. And I was able to just switch gears so much with the demand of these students because, you know, they're, they're hip and they want one wants electronic stuff. And then one wants like, you know, like I said, uh, again, with implications, you know, to really get a, a period piece going is like huge for, for film too. If you can really hone in on an era and, I don't know. Someone's doing Baroque music. Someone's doing classical music. You, you get it. Um, so yeah, it so, helped a ton. So you still helped think there's some value to studying a historical style? In a, in a sense, because um, I mean, there's really nothing like it in a way. It's always going to be there. And I think there's always going to be an implication for the media. Um, plus it just, it kind of, I, some of the music tech that that beats around the bush of music theory and allows people to create um, without having to know the know of music. Um, I find, um, you know, that means anyone can do it. And so if you have also the background of a concert composer and you know some of the old practices, you can really be unique, I think. Uh, I mean, even my harmonizations, uh, writing in this electronical kind of sci-fi style um i just thought i stood out big time compared to um you know just a lot of what they had heard and a lot of what they were going for and i just think it's gone such a long way <laughs> honestly uh, okay. and and when i really took a uh, counterpoint seriously <laughs> like even that stuff was like so crucial with writing melodies and and different things cinematically and making sure and you can do parallel fists and stuff with that music of course but you understand, I think, a little more of the emotional depth behind the notes when you study the, the period music, you know. Implications from all eras. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, it's yeah. like a, it's a complaint of mine when you, when you hear period music in a, in a film or television series. Mm -hmm. A lot of times this, they kind of get the style, but they don't yeah. really get it. You know? No, preach. It's it's the biggest downfall of Hollywood and that sort of production style is like, you know, it is all, uh, what's the word? Not a gimmick, but I mean, it's entertainment and it's not. So to even have that background is going to give you a, a big edge on some people when you say, oh, I studied this, you know, or, oh, I've written a piece that's after like a Mozartian form, uh, you know, and boom, you've landed a job <laughs> without even showing the music, you know, maybe, but it's a, uh, yeah. Okay.
big complaint of mine too. And you know, uh, the big film composers in the game, most of them at least nowadays, some of us are sneaking through, I think like Brian Tyler or, you know, even, even Hans Zimmer is not really that, that well versed in like super theoretical terms. So, um, you know, uh, but the Eric Korngold, some of the John Williams. Oh my goodness. He was a, a pianist for this stuff. He played anything from jazz to classical to, and so he was just a master, you know, you just, you kind of get to that next level, I think, uh, when you study real music and then take it into a media sense, because, you know, um, you know, film score is weird too, because it's not your music at the end of it. I mean, for some indie films and stuff, you can get away with the contract saying, you know, I want to retain certain rights if I want to record this with a something later or whatever. Um, but you're, you're here doing a blockbuster. It's going to be pretty much like, hey, this is staying with the producer or the director or whatever creator of the film and it's their property. So it's a it's a big give up too, um, to to really write and create in media because it's not going to be yours, but it's also, I think, really important to have the ability to create so much, you know, that some of these classical composers like, well, period composers like Bach and, and Beethoven, you know, their catalogs are huge. Um, you look at film composers, their catalogs are pretty big too because they're doing constantly something new. And so, you know, any, any big influence you can get or small, I'd, I'd take it try and learn any styles you can you know okay uh yeah. good. that's good advice so uh so you're saying that uh most of the work is contract contract work contract for hire yeah absolutely yeah. you're a you're an independent free agent basically out there uh you, you know and there are certain unions and get, stuff you um, get licensing royalties for for uh reuse of the music then i do think you get royalties yeah but okay. but i couldn't take like if I, if I wrote a film and did it with a certain symphony and recording and I wanted to redo it or add on to it as a suite, like a film suite, I would have to get their permission. I, I wouldn't be able to take any note of that, even to a different film. And what really sucks, sometimes you come up with a great idea and you kind of want to put it in the back pocket and, and you can't because there's a draft you showed uh, these producers and it's automatically theirs, you know, goes under like the archive of the film's music and stages. So, um, you know, it's just, it's, it is what it is. And you have to really live in that musical space and, and then give it up when you're done, you know? So it's interesting. Uh, I've heard a lot of complaints too, in, in this sort of contract style work, like from Thomas Newman or something where he'll do this film, American Beauty. And then any film he gets after that, he, uh, uh, all the producers are like, we want an American Beauty score. And this guy's stuck with trying to make something new, you know, unrelative copyright wise uh, to American Beauty while sort of capturing that same emotion. So it's, it can be a really uh, stressful line with the sort of uh, I think you, you can find on YouTube James mm -hmm. Horner complaining about the, the same thing. Nice. <laughs> I, I have to write the same stuff all over again. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. Yeah, he it's hard. Complaining. And he was always recycling themes mm -hmm. from the older movies and some directs. Oh, you used that before? Yes, but it's, I don't care. I use Oh, <laughs> I, I want to watch that. That's great. <laughs> R.I.P. Uh, but I always liked his, his composing and I actually heard from, you know, like testimony of people that knew him, I guess, or worked with him around Avatar. I think it was that he really took a lot of the work into his own hands and, and wrote everything. And, and he, he really spent a lot of time. So I could see where he's coming from and, and the frustration of like putting together a whole thing just to, you know, and, and that'll happen big time in media music. You'll have this great idea. You think it's solid, you bring it in and they're like, ah, you know, I, I really like where it's going, but can we cut out basically every instrument except for this one and then just rewrite around it and it'll be great, you know, and that'll happen maybe twice or three times. So, you know, a lot of creativity. Uh, it takes a lot. Um, you know. I saw, um, I know Rodrigo's in it too. I don't know if you are, Jimmy. There's a, mm -hmm. the Richard Kraft. I don't know if you know of him. Uh, he yeah. started this group on uh facebook that's all uh Ooh. media composers uh, and they all talk about stuff and um a big thing right now is the you know as a composer we slave over this art 
But then as a composer in media, you're doing something that's so close to you and giving it to someone else to use. And in, yeah. in, in that sense, from like a chamber sense, we make the music, other people play it. We're kind of the people in power in that. But yeah, in, in yeah. media, you're not at all. Um, was that something that you struggled with or that you see other people struggle with uh, throughout your time, like starting to get into this? Oh, sort of thing? oh yeah. Um, you know, it really takes that sort of thick skin to be able to, to kind of navigate that because, um, you know, and especially back to our conversation with discussing the music and, and, you know, that was actually something I did have a, a hard time with on this one film. It was revision seven, at least. And, and it was seven of the third piece I wrote. They made me rewrite it three times. And it was all good stuff. They were just like so needy. And they just knew anyways. Um, the, the tough thing with that was it, it really is theirs. And their opinion is more than yours about your own music <laughs> and not only to navigate that kind of language between each other to talk about where the emotions are and what the music is doing and like how it's affecting the emotions they're going to see it completely different than you a lot of times um and so what i found i grew from in that uh, big time was actually that sort of resilience even in my own revisions to be honest and kind of say okay, where's this going? It's not really going. Uh, so there's some give and take in that. Um, some work was really seamless though. And I think that's where you make the best relationships is when, you know, you can really kind of nail it on the first or second time. Uh, and, you know, either will happen. So that's a good question though, because like that, that was really one thing that I didn't understand about the style of, um, of music and, and production and stuff is that it's just that way. So, <laughs> yeah, there's Anywho. a, there's a quote that I really like that uh, tries to help me with that kind of mantra. That's a, we're just service people. Just mm. like we, we treat it differently, but really we're just giving a product. Um, so yeah, we're, we're taught to believe that we have to have this huge ego about things. Yeah, really. no, We're making a preach, product. Preach. If it's bad, change it. Who cares? Mm -hmm. No, that's true. I really um, like that stuff. Yeah, me too. Really, that was to. Bo Burnham. <laughs> oh, good, good old Bo Burnham. Who is that? <laughs> that's kind of along the lines of a, I guess, a broad question I have, but with mm. creativity in general, I personally. Um, even with a limited knowledge of music theory, I tend to be very perfectionistic. And so it's hard to finish projects. And yeah. I, I mean, constantly just as a creator, I think everyone's going to hold themselves to the highest standard that they possibly can. How do you yeah, deal right. with that when you're creating for projects that don't necessarily demand something at your standard? Um, so that's a good question. You, I, I learned something early in film school and the guy said, take the project and figure it out later. Um, I think whether or not um, it's a strong suit of yours or not and what you're working in, in this medium, um, I think just, just maintaining, um, maintaining the end goal and the reason that you're doing it is, is huge. Um, finding those gaps in, in workflow and perfectionism, um, you know, there's a, there's a time for studying and there's a time for working. And I think the quicker you can understand that you're still learning while you're doing something and composing something and creating, um, it's like you're, you're in a, a study mind state versus when you're going to complete something, um, you have more of a, I can see the end goal. I'm seeing the whole picture come together. Um, you know, things that you learned or, or strengths that you have will start plugging into new um, situations, whether it's you're trying to compose music for the certain scene, get a transition or, or what have you. Um, you know, you'll learn and you'll go between that. I'm studying sort of this style so that in the morning I can wake up and really get the composition down or 
I'm running into this roadblock with the project because, I, you know, I'm just not getting it right. Um, you know, and that's, that's sort of the situation where I take myself out and say, okay, what, a, what am I not looking at? Um, what strengths am I relying on too much? And trying to get some other influence going on or, or some research, even basic YouTubing, you know, whatever to, to get on the internet and sort of try and piece the puzzle together. Uh, it's a huge part of, of uh, the job. And I think, you know, the more and more you complete stuff, you'll understand the, the workflow and how that works with you. And, you know, when you know you're, you're really on and when you're, you're not, so you'll be able to save time that way, um, big time. But um, yeah, it just comes down to, to really navigating though that, um, you know, I need to learn something new in order to get this done so I can keep the work going too, you know. Uh, once you start really working, that's a, another thing I noticed it, even in the grad program was it's got to be done with one on to the next in a, a certain way um, just because that you got to get things done and you'll find that the perfectionism will start to subside because you have collaborators and people agreeing on what you're doing or the direction things are going. So, yeah. That's helpful. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Sorry, I'm getting a little parched. Just some water. Um, anyone else have any questions? I know we're getting getting there. <laughs> um, any advice on starting? Just starting oh. a project in general? Um, you know, I've always found when I've started something, whether it's composition or, or media composition or whatever, that I need to to find my happy place <laughs> in, in, in simple terms. Um, and, you know, to really be honest with how I'm feeling and what my intentions are going into it. Um, sometimes I, I say, oh, this is going to be more of a free form, um, you know, because there's not a pressing time matter or you know, it's just free creativity. At that, I, I take a, a lot more time to start and really find a foundation um, when it's punch time and I, I really need to get something done and it's like, hey, we need a demo, uh, you know, tomorrow or tonight kind of thing. And you sit down and you're really trying to get that project started. You just have to trust your gut. And I know it seems silly, but even that seems like a muscle of its own that, you know, the more you do that, the more your like subconscious kicks in or something and, and you can just sit down and say, okay, I need something sad or I need, I need something to come across with this emotion, um, you know? And, and that's where I've really found to, to kind of, again, train myself to either take the time to learn how to start the project and, and where it should come from, or you just have to hit the ground running, trusting your resources and, um, and really leaving editing and, and certain ideas for for after you really get a, a big portion done or or enough to say wow this is a nice beginning so that's been my my biggest thing is to kind of train that muscle uh that gut muscle uh when it comes to your approach um, and that's different for everyone as far as i've heard um you know some people like to compose in the morning at night uh eating, not eating, having a drink or not, you know, it's, it's all over the place. So, um, you know, just got to trust your process and the quicker you, you can come up with what works the best is, is a big, you know, take note of some things when you're really composing or you're really hitting a good jag and you're, you know, you have to understand why, because that's, you know, time is money in, in this field for sure. And, um, uh, the more you can control your time and your resources, you're, going to be much better off so all right yeah. hey jimmy thanks for spending some time with us today oh it was Thank awesome you. it was awesome uh we should catch up some more maybe a, a santa chef uh kind of thing <laughs> we can sure. get on zoom and yeah. <laughs> uh well uh i mean you're you're in, are you back in west virginia now where, where are you at well i i'm in maryland uh just like outside of wvu basically like uh, okay. 45 minutes so just right. staying at my dad's for a little while until I can get a place and stuff and okay. figure out the big job from there. So, well, we'll see, we'll see how things emerge in the uh, pandemic <laughs> environment, but yeah, for sure. Right uh, on. And uh, everybody, Jimmy's piece, uh, actually it's four short samples tonight on oh, the yeah. concert, seven 30. Uh, uh, Rodrigo's 
uh, Kingdom of the Fairies tonight as well, which is really good. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I hope not, I'm not missing things, but Dalton's got a film tomorrow at th nice. Friday at 3. John's got a film Friday at 7.30. And uh, another another kind of multimedia project uh, on that seven thirty concert too, uh, uh, by Anthony Almendares. So, oh, that, I'm excited to see that too. Yeah. See what him and his brother have been up to. Right on. Uh, yeah. So, thanks all for hanging, and uh, yeah, thanks, we'll we'll see y'all soon. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Have a great one. Bye bye. See you, Jimmy. See you guys. Bye.